Hi everyone, Colin here. In this video, I'm going to talk you through a Romanian deadlift or an RDL, and I'm going to talk you through a full deadlift or a conventional deadlift. To start off, you must learn how to Romanian deadlift first. That is the number one safety tip that I can give you. Learn how to Romanian deadlift first. Perfect your Romanian deadlift, and then you can move on to full or conventional deadlifts. Just to get some terminology, first of all, RDL stands for Romanian deadlift. It's a style of deadlifting, and conventional and full deadlift are the same thing. Just to demonstrate really quickly, first with our pole, feet under hips, toes pointing forward, unlocking your knees, hinging our hips, spine in neutral, down, stretching the back of our legs, back up, squeeze our glutes. Full deadlift, exact same movement, down to our knee, bending our knees, keeping our back nice and straight, straighten our knees, hips forward. First of all, the difference between a Romanian deadlift and a full deadlift is the Romanian focus is mainly on hamstrings, glutes, lower back. We want to emphasize the hamstrings and glutes more, whilst the full deadlift or the deadlift all the way to the floor brings in a lot more upper back. If you're full deadlifting and you don't know your body, you won't know whether you're working upper back, lower back, glutes or hamstrings if you're full deadlifting. If you're doing a Romanian deadlift though, and if you use the technique that I'm going to show you, you're going to emphasize hamstrings, glutes, and a little bit of lower back. But we're going to try and take the emphasis away from this guy. Now, when you are Romanian deadlifting, it's not uncommon to feel it in your lower back, even if your technique is perfect. We always have to remember it's the weakest link in the chain that's going to work the hardest. So if your lower back is quite weak, yes, you will feel it in your Romanian deadlift, even if your technique is perfect, but eventually that will get stronger over time. We're going to briefly touch on mobility. Usually the hamstrings are the only muscle group that are going to limit you deadlifting. And it applies to a full deadlift or a conventional deadlift more so than a Romanian deadlift. Even if you have poor hamstring flexibility, you can still Romanian deadlift and you can actually use the Romanian deadlift to improve your hamstring flexibility. So, if you've got poor hamstring flexibility, you might not be able to fully deadlift all the way to the floor. Okay, that's an important thing to note. So you will have to address that mobility first. What you're going to notice is I'm in a pair of socks. And the reason I'm in my socks is two reasons. When I'm deadlifting, I want to be as close to the floor as possible. I don't want to be in a pair of weightlifting shoes because a weightlifting shoe has a big heel on it so I'm further away from the floor. And I also don't want to be in a pair of runners. I don't ever want to be in a pair of runners if I'm lifting something heavy. The other reason to deadlift in a pair of socks is for increased proprioception. That's going to give our nervous system some positive feedback from the floor and help us with our balance. At the same time, I don't recommend you train in your bare feet. I recommend wearing a pair of flat sole shoes just in case a weight falls on your toe. So flat sole shoes, if you're going for a PB or if you're going for your heaviest set of your training session, yeah, of course, go in a pair of socks, but just be very careful you don't hurt your toes. Okay, so we're going to start off with our stance. We want to go feet below our hips. And we actually want to point our toes out very slightly. Now, if you're just starting off, just point your toes forward. But if you want to be a little bit more technical about it, you're talking 5 to 10 degrees out to the side. You want to have a splayed foot. You don't want to have curled toes, okay? So you want to have a good wide base on your feet. With our knees, we don't really need to worry too much about our knees. But in this instance, we're going to talk through the RDL first. Okay, so with our RDL, what we want to do is we want to unlock our knees. We don't ever want those knees locked out, so we've got to unlock those knees. On our hips and our lower back, we want to keep a neutral spine. We don't ever want to over arch, and at the same time, we don't want to over extend our lower back. So we've got our feet under our hips, toes more or less pointing forward. We're unlocking our knees, we're hinging at our hips. Okay, so I'm hinging at my hips. All of this is happening around my pelvis. It's not happening around my lower back. Okay, so we want to keep that back nice and straight, hinge at the hips. We want to keep the weight through our heels, always through our heels. And if we keep the weight through our heels, you can see that my arse is going to travel backwards. We don't ever want to be here and hinge at the hips and my pelvis stays where it is. In this instance, the weight is going way forward onto my toes, and I don't ever want that, okay? So, weight through the heels all the time, hinging at the hips, arse will go backwards. 
Okay, so that looked fairly easy, but trust me, it's very, very complicated, and it's difficult to get it right, okay? To get it right, what we do is we do this a three-point-of-contact drill, and ultimately this is to encourage a neutral spine and to get a good hip hinge. So, we've got three points of contact. One point of contact at our glute, one in between our shoulder blades, and one in the back of our head. We've got one hand in the small of our neck pressing the pole against our body, the other hand in the small of our back pressing the pole against our body. From here, we're getting set up again. Feet under our hips, toes pointing forward, unlocking our knees. We're hinging at our hips. We're keeping those three points of contact all the way through. We're keeping the weight through our heels so our arse is going backwards. We're going down until we get a stretch on our hamstrings, okay? This is our finished position. Down, get the stretch in your hamstrings, and you come back up. Hinge the hips, arse goes backwards, only a slight bend in the knees. You're not doing this. Okay, so there's only a slight bend in the knees, they're just outside lockout, you should get your stretch fairly early, come back up. It's not uncommon for people with very tight hamstrings to go to here, get their stretch and then come back up. One of the most common errors when deadlifting is lumbar flexion or rounding of our spine. And this drill is designed to teach us not to do that. So, as I hinge on my hips and go back, if I maintain those three points of contact, my lumbar spine and my back stays in neutral. If I lose that bottom point of contact, all of a sudden, my lower back is now arched, I've got lumbar flexion, and I'm bringing in a lot more lower back when I'm lifting the weight. Okay? So, the goal of this exercise is to go down, keep that back nice and straight, get the stretch in our hamstrings, okay? stretch back here, and then come back up. Now, if you've got significant mobility in your lower back, this usually isn't a massive issue, but if you've got massive amounts of mobility in your lower back, you don't want to overextend like this. Okay? So you don't want to be doing this. Okay, you want to try and keep that lower back in neutral, but in general, people find it difficult to maintain that neutral spine and they end up going down like this. So in that instance, we teach people to cock their arse in the air as much as they can. So really try and cock their arse in the air and then go down. Usually for someone who is used to doing this, if you tell them to cock their arse in the air, they'll get to neutral and they'll get to where you want them to be. If someone has a load of spinal mobility, you want to tell them to keep their spine in neutral and then go. Because those guys have so much range to really, really extend it. We don't want that. We progress along then to bring the pole out in front and do the exact same thing. Feet under hips, toes pointing forward, unlocking our knees, hinging at our hips, weight through our heels, down, get a stretch in our hamstrings, and back up. From this position, there's some very common mistakes. The pole getting away from us is number one, and it's the one thing we want to avoid, okay? So, we got to keep the weight through our heels, and we got to keep that pole touching off our body all the time. So we got to press the pole in against our body. The main reason we want to do this is because we want to emphasize hamstrings, glutes. We don't want to overemphasize the lower back. In this movement, the RDL, we're working hamstrings, glutes, and lower back, but we obviously want to emphasize these two guys. We do that by keeping the weight through our heels and keeping that pole close to our body. More hamstrings and glutes. Come onto my toes, let the pole get away from me. Way more lower back. Okay, so hamstrings and glutes is what we want. Hinging at our hips, down, we get a stretch your hamstrings. This is as far as I go, and we come back up. Now, it's a little bit more complicated than just keeping it up against your body. We want to tuck those shoulder blades in, we want to squeeze our lats and press the pole against the body, and we want to go down from there. If you ever feel like that bar is sitting on your legs or resting on top of your knees, that means you've got too much flexion at your knee. So you need to straighten those knees a little bit. It should only be guided down by your quads. It should never be sitting or resting on your quads. The grip we want to use is an over-under grip. So we've one hand over, one hand under. And that gives us more control over the bar. So if I demonstrate with this guy, if I have a double over grip and I rotate it, that's as much control as I have. If I switch it over and I go again, you can see I have a lot more control over the bar. Okay? Something minor, but it will make a difference. We've established an over-under grip. We're pressing the pole in against our body. So we're squeezing our lats to do that. We're tucking our shoulder blades together. That's going to give us a chest out position. With our head, we just want to pick a spot on the floor a couple of feet in front of us and just Look at that. Okay, we want to keep ourselves in a neutral spine here as well. We don't ever want to overflex and overextend. That's just going to throw our balance off. So, a nice neutral spine. Pick a spot, a couple of feet in front of you. Down and back. The last thing we want to introduce into our RDL is a glute squeeze at the top. 
This isn't typically part of an RDL or a conventional deadlift, but it will give us added glute development, which is really important for athletic development. So you're going to get more out of your deadlifting if you introduce this glute squeeze. And literally all it is, is rather than finishing here, we're finishing here like this. So those hips are being thrusted forward a little bit by squeezing our glutes. We're not looking to extend backwards like this, okay? All it is is rather than finishing here, we're finishing here. Glute squeeze, a bit of a thrust. Romanian deadlift, feet under hips, toes pointing forward, or between five and 10 degrees pointing out. Unlocking your knees, hinging at our hips, keeping that spine in neutral, weight through our heels, keeping that pole nice and close to our body, squeezing our lats, stuffing our shoulder blades together, picking a pint in the floor, a couple of feet in front of you, just focusing on that, down and back up, squeeze the glutes at the top. Okay, so that was a very slow one. This is a more normal pace. You're going down, Stretch, back up, squeeze, down, stretch, back up, squeeze. Again, the goal of this exercise is not to get to the floor. If I try and get to the floor, I start to round my lower back. The goal of this exercise is to get to your stretch in the hamstrings, come back up, squeeze the glutes, and you're done. Okay, so Romanian deadlift. Progress to a full deadlift. Feet under hips, toes pointing forward, unlocking your knees, hinging on your hips, way through our heels, back nice and straight, arse goes backwards, keeping that pole touching off our body. We get to the bottom position here of our RDL, from here then, we bend the knees. Our spine stays at the same angle to the floor. So let's say for argument's sake, I'm 45 degrees to the floor. If you draw a line between my lumbar spine all the way up through my thoracic spine, cervical spine and the top of my head, that's the exact same angle here and here. We don't ever want that angle to increase or to decrease. Okay? So, exact same angle, you're just bending the knees. Back up, hips forward. One of the most common mistakes here is when we go down, rather than keeping that back angle the same, we get a lot of bend at the knees and the hips drop. We don't ever want your hips dropping. Okay? So, we're going from here to here. We're not going from here to here. So when we're in our bottom position, what we want is we want that pole touching off our body all the time. Okay? So we're down here, that pole is touching off our shins. And what you'll actually notice is it's actually behind my shoulders. Okay? Back is nice and flat, so I have a neutral spine. I've got my shoulder blades tucked in, and I've got the pole pressed against my body. If I relax my shoulders, here we go, pole way out in front, way more lower back. So i got to keep those shoulder blades together, press the pole in against my body. What you notice then is, it's actually above my shoulder blades or my scapula. So, don't ever start here in this position, start here. What you'll also see is, people will start here, as I mentioned earlier, and the pole is directly in line with the shoulders. Now if you initiate your lift here, what's going to happen is, those hips are first going to come up, and then you're going to start with your lift. You'll always notice that with people deadlifting. They'll start here, they'll pull, hips go forward first, and then the bar comes off the ground. So just get your start position right. I want to talk through a Valsalva now, and I've mentioned this in other videos, and there's also another detailed video on the Valsalva maneuver. Basically, the Valsalva maneuver is a big deep breath into our belly, blowing out against a closed mouth. What that's doing is increasing our intra-abdominal pressure, so really bracing your core here. When we're making a lift from the floor, obviously the weight has got to transfer through our core here. If the core isn't solid, we're not going to lift heavy. And it's also a huge safety uh, technique that we can use to really strengthen up everything here and make sure that the forces are transferred efficiently through here. You don't want to be breathing like this when you're deadlifting. That's another reason to use a belt. When we're using our belt and doing a Valsalva, essentially what we're doing is taking a big breath into our belly, bracing our core, and pushing out against our belt. Okay, and that just gives us more feedback and helps us activate our core a little bit more because we have that feedback from the belt. You can breathe out at the top of the lift when you know you're going to complete the lift. Using a good Valsalva is also a way to rectify lordosis or spinal flexion when you're deadlifting. So if you're deadlifting a heavy weight and you go down and 
this is what happens fairly early and you've got flexion of that spine, you're probably not using a good enough valsalva. If you have the flexibility in your hamstrings, you're okay, but if you don't have a good valsalva or a good tension through your core, this is probably going to happen. Okay, so we have to have a good valsalva, we really have to brace that core to get a good solid deadlift. Just a couple of quick tips before we go. Knee high socks are a really good choice when you're deadlifting because we're keeping that bar fairly close so it is going to graze our shin and you can uh, break the skin. Okay, so knee high socks are a fairly good idea. The bar that you choose should have a smooth portion in the middle of the bar where it's going to be rolling up your quads and your shins. Okay, again that's going to prevent any um, damage to your skin. Eventually when you start deadlifting more and more and the weight gets heavier and heavier, you're going to run into trouble with your grip. Uh, particularly if you've got small hands, small forearms. If you've big hands, big forearms, you're going to have a lot stronger grip. What we want to make sure we're doing is getting a good grip on the bar. Okay? You don't want to hook grip it like this. You want to squeeze with the thumb and squeeze with the fingers. If you can't hold on to the bar, use some chalk first of all to get a bit more of a grip on it. You're going to have to develop some calluses on your hands. Okay, So your hands are going to have to be a little bit rough in order to take um, a narrowed bar or a rougher bar. And then after all of that, you can use wrist straps. Now, I'll detail how to use wrist straps in a different video, um, but, but essentially what they do is they help transfer the forces through our wrists. So when we've got these guys on, and we've wrapped around the bar, we're literally just using our fingers to hold the strap onto the bar, and the force has been transitioned through our wrist, which takes the emphasis away from the fingers and thumbs. Just to demonstrate really quickly, first with our pole, feet under hips, toes pointing forward, unlocking your knees, hinging our hips, spine in neutral, down, Stretching the back of our legs, back up, squeeze our glutes. If we want to get a little bit more technical, we can point our toes out about 5 to 10 degrees, keeping our foot splayed or flat on the floor, no curling of our toes. Again, unlocking our knees, hinging our hips, arse is going backwards, weight is through our heels. Lumbar spine in neutral, bar touching off our body, shoulder blades together, down, stretching the back of our legs, come up, squeeze our glutes. Full deadlift. Exact same movement, down to our knee, bending our knees, keeping our back nice and straight, straighten our knees, hips forward. To demonstrate that now with our bar, exact same thing, okay? We've got an over under grip. We've got the bar touching off our shins before we lift off. Feet under hips, toes pointing forward. Get down, back nice and straight, pin those shoulder blades together. Bar is in line with our scapula, not our shoulders. From there then we're straightening our knees, hips forward, squeeze the glutes, unlock our knees, down, bend our knees, straighten our knees, hips forward, hinging your hips, down, bend your knees. If you have any questions about the Romanian deadlift or the full deadlift, make sure you leave them in the comment section below or ask me when I'm here in the gym. As always, your support is really, really appreciated. Make sure you like the video. If you like the video, like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, tell a friend. That's the best way to show your support, and trust me, it is really, really appreciated. There's more of this good stuff coming. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. Slan.